Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the card stock quality from sort of a legal perspective, warranties, customer warranties and guarantees. So when you buy a product, you are going to use that product for something. In this case, you're going to use the magic cards to play magic. When a product is defected, you cannot use it to play magic. Typically, companies jump out ahead. A lot of companies like Costco, they find out that they've been selling, let's say, corn with some bacteria in it. Costco will, will take the, hey, we're going to fix the problem. And then they will negotiate and settle with the corn company a little later in time. But it is very important that the company gets out in front. Uh, you hear this with the very famous case of the Ford Fiesta with the engine that explodes. And a lot of these recalls, if you, the Audi, I was watching a documentary on Netflix where the, not Audi actually, it's the Volkswagen. They said it was very environmentally friendly, but it turned out that they were creating, it was not environmentally friendly. They were targeting people who cared about the environment with a destructive, uh, a car that would destroy the environment. And when it was being tested, it's not being driven around, it's stationary and a wheels turn the machine in the Volkswagen would identify that, the software would say, mm, okay, so we're being tested, let's not give any emissions out, or very few emissions. But as soon as the car would hit the road, it would just pollute like crazy. Here we have an issue with these magic cards. A lot of us find it kind of cool that it's misprinted and Sometimes a misprint is really awesome, and sometimes it's not. You can see that the ink is very dark uh, to the point that it, it appears that a Sharpie was used to scratch out the card. YouTubers like Tolarian and MTG Headquarters have called Wizards of the Coast on this issue. To my knowledge, they haven't really addressed it, and there, there is legal concern from their side whether or not they can even address the issue. You have a lot of cards that are coming damaged. The, my best example of this is the Master Set. A Master Set is considered a premium product. And when you think of premium products, you think of you know high quality, you think of cards that are not going to be misprinted, that they put enough ink in the printer, there's two problems with this. And the second, the first problem is obvious to everyone. The card looks terrible, misprinted. The second problem is quality assurance. There is no, apparently no one checking this. You have entire boxes like I'm gonna show you soon where the entire boxes, you know, has lines across it and completely unplayable and completely not valuable. So here you see two cards, right? But even the even if it wasn't the inking and stuff, this is very common. It's so strange when you think of technology and how it has advanced in pretty much every field. But for Magic the Gathering, who knows what's happening? I can tell you that the foils, when I played in McKay Mass, when I played, getting a misprint was something really special. It was one in... It was very highly collectible, highly desirable. Something like this doesn't happen very often when you're in Invasion, for instance. But today, it happens all the time. And I don't really see how... I can understand it happening, but I don't understand how quality assurance is not catching this, especially when they have entire boxes, right? entire boxes or entire cards, the half of the card is removed. This isn't, these problems are not a, not as simple as we ran out of ink, somebody put more ink. The problem is, okay, we ran out of ink, someone didn't put more ink in and no one caught it. 
So they are knowingly selling defective products. And you might say, oh, well, these defective products actually don't have any impact on play. Magic is a collectible card game. So I'm going to take two different arguments here. I'm going to go with the, the play side. If you have foil cards and your foil card is double sleeved and old, they do bend. They do. It is noticeable. If that's the only foil in your deck, you can tell where your foil is. Now, you might blame the cheater and you might blame the person playing that one foil card, but at the same time, they paid money for it. It shouldn't actually, from the vault is a very good example or something where people paid a premium product and it turned out that the premium product was just unplayable. You couldn't even sleeve it up. You can't even double sleeve it and eventually, you know, it will become noticeable. Now here we're looking at the most critical example where someone purchased a very expensive, mod, I believe this is Modern Masters 2017 set and his entire box and who knows how many boxes like his has this giant line. So are you telling me, I, I'm sure this may be a case, are you telling me that they printed an entire sheet like this and no one noticed or cared enough to be like, wait a second, we can't possibly let this go out in public. So the players are at disadvantage because they can't use the foil cards. Otherwise, they may they may lose. They may be a judge may be called on them for cheating. And the collectors, there's some misprints that are kind of cool. I can see it be more valuable. But then there are other misprints like this, where it's just your entire box of quote a MSRP ten dollar set a pack, a $10, a booster pack is absolute garbage. I mean, does anyone want this Blood Moon? His entire, like all the cards in his box, if not his case, has this giant white line in front of it. And who knows how many cases are like this. And this is considered a premium product. This is something that they're charging $10 for, a pack of cardboard. So I do have like the argument here is whether you're a collector or a player, you should be aware that having cards that are in eff effectively damaged when you get them, damaged goods, does affect its value and does affect its playability. Not every one of these misprints is going to be as cool as the concealed courtyard. A blood moon like this, I don't think anyone would really give a premium. I think people would actually not want to trade for it. And that's my opinion. Uh, we're going to see Death Shadow. It was literally a whole box like this. And not one person in quality control like said, mm, this is bad quality. We should probably rerun the print. We are in a scenario where it is very obvious and Wizard of the Coast tries to sweep it under the rug for multiple sets, including premium sets like a modern master set. We have a such a low card quality. The card paper is low. The foils are done improperly. The inking, it just seems like they don't have enough ink. Even, even like Assuming that you work in an office place with your secretary, if your secretary prints something and it has this giant line in the middle of it, do you think your secretary would go back and fill in the ink and then print it again? Yes, they would. This is a very obvious solution here. Um, it's super obvious. It's quality assurance. They clearly have none. The fact that this is getting out, the leaks are getting out, all of this stuff is happening uh, leads me to believe that to save money and to save costs, they have decided to create a product they know is crap. I mean, you look at this, like people say it's kind of cool, but should, should this be happening? Like, should you have a, a giant white line or a small white line across the middle of all your cards? Is that the product that you're paying your hard earned money to buy? Misprints used to be really special. Um, cramps, um, 
when you know a card gets stuck with the booster pack and then has that little texture to it. I used to love misprints, but today you look at it and literally pretty much everything is misprinted. And you know, with the you know, the sometimes the most common misprint is when the card is not aligned properly. It's either a little too high, a little to the right, a little to the left. I see that all the time in my new cards, and I don't understand why. How can they 20 years ago make a higher quality product? I think we will all agree that cards from 20 years ago were uh, there were few, far fewer are uh, fewer misprints, and the cards felt better. They felt heavier they were less likely to be damaged we didn't have the need for all these sleeves these double sleeves these trade binders like you know i mean you look at today's cards and they literally are you protect them like with literally everything a briefcase a hand carved wooden deck box i mean <laughs> you could probably like uh, shoot a gun at your deck and there's probably like a gun proof deck box or something or a bulletproof deck box my point is these misprints are not even close to being like acceptable you look at this card and literally it's they spent i guess to save a little bit of money they inked about 10 percent of the card how is this happening um, how is this happening to foils? Why are they curling? Why are they so curved all the time? Even the non-foils are so curved. Like you put them in any human atmosphere, like Houston in summertime, I guarantee you they're going to start cur curling, and there's no way to stop it. Here's the deal: they cannot admit that this is bad. Because if they admit that it's bad, they will have to give a refund. And that is the last thing they did. But they used to give refunds. Uh, when Ursa's Legacy happened and Memory Jar was emergency banned, you could trade your Memory Jar in for a pack of Ursa's Legacy. I thought that was kind of nice. They would pay the shipping and you, it would be pretty, it'd be pretty neat. Today, these refund policies, these... Um, it's here's here's my opinion and again those i'm trying to keep it as neutral as possible and now i'm going to get to my opinion side which is obviously going to be biased so i'm going to say that up front i don't understand why resources are being put towards an investigation team on its players when you have this issue and many of you will say oh it's a different issue magic to got online is a different issue magic arena is a different issue this is a different issue you can work on multiple issues at one time you only have an you have a set amount of resources that you can dedicate i would expect that the majority of the resources should be set to fixing this card quality issue and I know many of you think that these cards are printed so far in advance that no one can ever fix it. And if it's just damaged, it's damaged and no one knew. The role of quality assurance, there is a job title and the person's job is to make sure this doesn't happen. And not to at least not to the scale it has been currently happening. If a company has pride, they're going to eat the lost. They're going to eat the loss and print a quality product. Many companies in the past have done that. When the Samsung phones were exploding, they had to refund the product. I think it was a Samsung Note 2 or something. It was a plane that like, you wouldn't even, you're not even allowed to bring it. it was it Samsung Galaxy? You weren't allowed to bring it onto the airplane because it was, it would explode. It's fascinating how Wizard of Coast deals with this and when you compare it to other companies like costco like amazon like uh, tokyo taco mode is very good so many of these other companies they understand customer service a customer is like sam walton said they're the key they're the boss they can take their money and spend it somewhere else 
I don't see why resources cannot be sent to fix this problem. And a lot of the, first of all, why are people defending this? Like a lot of magic judges, a lot of pro, like why are you defending wizards selling you an inferior product that they know is damaged and quote misprinted? Why would you defend this? You're the customer. Like I think there's people are so trapped in this mindset of, I mean, it's so absurd where you're the customer and or you're a judge, you're volunteering for free and you're going to let Wizard of the Coast run you over an ice cream truck anytime they want to. Why? You're the volunteer. You can leave at any time. You're not hostage. We're not hostages to Wizards of the Coast. We're customers. We paid the money. And now they're using the money that we pay them to investigate us instead of fixing this problem. I know they can never say that this is an actual problem and they have maybe subtly do it because it would be a class action lawsuit and it would be very it would be very clear under customers are protected when they buy goods. The goods have to be, I think even if you showed a judge who didn't understand magic cards, you showed them a magic card with ink on it and you showed them a magic card without ink on it, the judge would understand, wait, this is like a printer and you guys didn't like, you guys promised to print a certain piece of paper so they could read or they could play their game and you didn't put ink in the printer. It, it's it's really, to me, it's very clear. This is just like, you know, a company that to save some money prints an invoice on a toner that is empty and then sends the invoice to a client and the client is like, wonderful, Wizard of the Coast. Thank you for sending this invoice I can't read. But, you know, it's a misprinted invoice. I'm going to go collect that. I'm going to just, you know, pay off and then keep it, you know, in a frame. That doesn't happen in real life. Like in real life, the majority of people know, hey, I ran out of ink. My toner is out of ink. Maybe I should buy a new toner and print it again. Like, I mean... Or let's say that you ran out of good paper and you didn't, you ordered the wrong paper. The strategy would not be to keep printing on, let's say you ordered brown paper instead of white paper and brown paper makes it harder to read. Well, you know, just because you have brown paper, it doesn't mean you should be printing your invoices on brown paper when your customers can't read it. Or in this case, it the paper, the invoice would, you know, it would uh, curve up. It wouldn't like lie on the it's just so obvious to me what's happening here is they didn't a no quality insurance person no quality insurance person wharf their salt would let so many of these misprints go go out it would be like the federal it would be like the u.s government just misprinted all their paper money imagine seeing paper money like this would you think that would happen no of course not it's not going to happen because that's the government and they have quality assurance people, which most people like if you work at a diaper factory, there's quality assurance. There's multiple people to make sure those diapers are of suitable quality to go out. Uh, any company has this person. I don't think Wizard of Coast has it. I think to save money, they must have let go of this person and now they're using that money, the, the resource, to hire investigators. That's the only uh, logical thing I can think about. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.